of a video tutorial or special new video showing you how to update and how to set up Dark Clone Mastermind. First of all, I'm going to show you how to update your Mastermind if you have a bunch of Masterminds and you want to really fast track and easily update them. So um, you need this file that I've created called darkclonestuff.zip and there's a link below the video that shows you how to find them. So I open up this uh, zip file inside you see I put the program Kelly into the file name I put in the uh, program name so that's a zip file I install a file called dark clone setup and update so I'm going to open up that install file and you see that there are three tabs there's mastermind setup mastermind update and mastermind info so if you click on mm update uh, these this is what you'll need to update your mastermind so first you should make sure that this address right here is correct for the most, for the official most recent uh, version of the Linux CP. So you should check on darkclone.io slash download and go to the Linux CP, right click on it and copy link address. That'll give you the correct uh, address for your Linux darkclone or you can go to darkclonetalks.org and check for Evan Duffield's official uh, English release of Dark Clone Mastermind Linux. And this right here would be uh, UCP 0.1.17.1.21, the most recent one. So in the install file, uh, right now if we were updating from 17.18 to 17.21, then uh, you can see the red is uh, 1719 is what we're creating a copy of and 1721 is the new one that we're updating to if it were if the new one say we're updating from 1721 to 1722 then this is 1721 and all the rest is 1722 so as long as you make sure that this root address is correct so now that this is all correct all you need to do to update your mastermind is copy all of this at once control C and open up Cuddy as I said if you don't have Cuddy then zip file should be in that too and if you have your mastermind each has saved sessions then all you need to do is go one by one through the masterminds and open them up or right now you can just type in the IP address of the port and click open type in your login and password and then if this is already copied in Excel all you have to do is right click paste all of them. Watch what it does. It updates the mastermind and it saves it itself. And this is still copied so you can go back into Cuddy and just open up the next mastermind. So then you can just keep repeating the same thing. Just open up the next mastermind, type in your login and password and right click. It'll do all the rest. Go to the next one. So that's a simple way to quickly update all of your masterminds. Now, if you'd like to set up some masterminds and you don't have any dark clones, first you want to buy some dark clones because it takes 1,000 dark clones per mastermind. So, to set up one mastermind, you're going to need 1,000 dark clones. First of all, if you want to buy the dark clones, you'll need to get 1,000, which is going to cost you, for example, say if you're cloneMarketCap.com, the clone how much it's going to cost, which is going to be about $2,350 worth of clones, right? The price is probably higher, by the way, than cloneMarketCap.com. So uh, go to Coinbase.com, create an account at Coinbase, and uh, they make a buy on enough Bitcoin that it will, you will be able to buy you a thousand dark coins. So you can get an idea from this price of the Coin Market Cap right here. So it's probably around two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars plus some extra because there will be some fees. So buy enough Bitcoins that you'll be able to get a thousand dark coins for Bitcoin plus a little bit more. Uh, buy those Bitcoins on Coinbase and then create an account on Tipsy.com if you don't have one already or whatever other coin you want to use for Tipsy. And uh, click on balances, go to the Bitcoin and click Bitcoin, click deposit BTC and it'll give you a public key to send the coins to. 
convert the time base signal from the bit time to a hybrid time, so the bit time can be changed to bit time. Uh, when we have these bit times on chip, it will take about an hour to get this confirmation of the bit time set uh, as the set uh, instance of the uh, thing. But uh, once this shows you your variable balance and bit time, then you'll be able to play the bit time of the dark time. So at that point, you want to go to dark time, so dark time, and go to DR code, which is next to C in the chip, and you will show your bit time of the dark time. So you can go scroll down and you'll see the BIOS and the cell order. So you can change this price to whatever price you want to pay for the dark time or the bit time. You can use that and you'll see if you want to pay higher than the market price, then you will be buying into these sell orders and you will instantly be able to buy those coins uh, for whatever price uh, are being offered by sell orders. Or if you want to put up a lower price than the market price, then you'll just put up a buy order down here somewhere and you'll just have to wait until somebody decides to sell one of your buy orders purchase. Uh, it's up to you if you want to put up, put in a order that either buys these up or if you want to put in a lower price just to make sure everything signs up and it will. Uh, so once you've rated all of your bit times for dark time, hopefully you'll have uh, 1,000 dark times plus a little bit extra. So you can go back to balances and your balance for dark time will show up. Um, your balance for dark time here, the variable balance will show up as 1000, that's a little bit more. So now you have your dark time where you can set up matching it. Your dark times are like this. So the first thing you want to do to set up a matching node is to create a remote Linux server. So you're going to be creating both a remote server and a local wallet that you probably have your phone on, a local computer. So the first thing you're going to do is create a remote server on your Linux computer for dark time. And what I use is dulpr.com. Uh, it is local and most uh, it's used by a lot of the dark time matching engines. So hopefully not all of you will use local because then if there's a problem with local, there's going to be problems with a lot of matching engines and a lot of the dark, dark time. So hopefully you'll find some other remote servers uh, other than this one. But I'm just giving you stuff from using Volta as a reference. So uh, to create an account on Volta, you click on Deploy and become a new remote server. So uh, client query, you can choose whatever location you want as well. So in California, LA, actually in Chicago would be more. Uh, Ubuntu 12.04 and 64, so you can go to the first one, $5 a month, and just click on Place Order. So then after about a minute or so, your remote server will show up. And you can click on Manage, and it will show you this information of your server. Right here, it will show the main IP address. And that's the IP address of your remote server. And then it'll, it'll show the initial password when you use that when you log in for the first time. So you'll know when you root, you have to be the initial password. So right now, I just make a copy of Control C of this IP. And we're going to use this Excel uh, file to keep, keep all of your information, keep a record of all your information. So uh, for the IP, uh, you can just, since we're creating our first matching node, you can replace all these X's, control V, to paste that IP address right here. So you have a record and a saved file. Location of this uh, new new IP is going to be listed right here. It's Chicago or wherever your apartment is in. Uh, hold C and click add new location. Great. So leave this Volta page up because what we need later will be this password one. But for now, we're going to create the local dark time wallet that's going to have the 1,000 dark times on it that's going to start your matching. So if you don't have the dark time um, software on your computer right now, you need to download it. So go to darktime.io slash download. And 
download the Windows software and you will want to create a folder in your C directory you can you make a folder called dart camp okay and you'll want to download the file into this directory dart camp c colon slash dart camp so it's going to be dart camp dash c camp dot exe that you're going to open up in here and then right click on this file and create a shortcut okay so this is a shortcut that it's created and then you can use this shortcut somewhere else on your computer with another step you say i've renamed this shortcut to mm001 because it's my my one last name now you should create a new file a text document but instead of a text document this is going to be see the target in the shortcut tab the target is c colon slash dart cam slash dart cam dash pc dot exe and then we're going to add this to the end of it okay after the dart cam dash pc dot exe we're going to have space dash d a t a b i r equals c colon slash and then we can make up a, a new folder now we can call it, I called mine hot dart you can call yours whatever you want this file or whatever you want uh, and it doesn't have to be in C colon it can be anywhere it can be in uh, another drive like the E colon or the D colon or whatever uh, in another drive so you say uh, you know C colon slash hot dart so I created a folder in my C directory I created a new folder called hot dart okay and that's just going to be my dart cam folder directory this folder will be something that hopefully my videos look like If you just create a new folder, it'll, this will be empty. If you already have the thing on your computer, then you should go to your Dart Cam folder, which would be uh, your Dart Cam folder would probably be c colon slash users slash your username slash data slash family slash Dart Cam. You'll probably have these files in there, but you should cut all of these files, move them all into this new little directory that we're creating here that's called my hot dart or my C, C directory I should say move all of those files into this new folder those files will no longer be in that old folder uh, so uh, back to the shortcut uh, let's see we have this dash data do dash equals C colon slash hot dart and then after that I would say space dash waller equals up a name I called my hot dog zero zero one just make up a name for your wallet so it's master node waller I just came up with the file name hot dog zero zero one so that I would remember that it's my master node number one and you can call it whatever you want any any file name really it's just kind of my own name and then after that uh, in in your shortcut target you're gonna have space dash c o n f equals c colon slash dart cam slash this is all uh, in the target then every time you run the first uh, you click apply or click OK every time you run this shortcut it's going to open the dart cam using the data directory of hot dog and using a conf of mm001 and it will be using a file hot dog 001 uh, as its wallet creating a new one right now it's creating a new folder now called hot dog 001 it's not even going to be a wallet like that one it's just going to be called hot dog 001 but you'll be creating a new one and you double click right now on uh, mm001 this shortcut dart cam which will create a new wallet that will be used locally 
what he needs to evolve. And once the client has synced, you can click on the help debug window and click on the console. Okay, and uh, if we go to this Excel file and do the MN setup, we'll see what we're going to do. We're going to do the national gen key, get account address, zero, and we're going to dump type P at that address. So here we're going to type in national gen key. Okay, and get account address zero. Double click on that address. private key, the public key, and the private key for the national log or record log. So copy this national private key and keep the public key that in this key file. It's national key. So we'll try to discover if this is what we need. Click on that. Type P. Uh, P stands for public private key. Also recommend getting the pu public private key as the second address of this log file. So so go to type P and type this is the zero address where we have the debugger and the loader address. So click copy the address. this point you should uh, go to prepare right here and encrypt document you should click encrypt document and set a password for this excel file so that nobody will be able to access it with all this information that you're saving in this excel file from the crash so once you've done that you are ready to encrypt this log so click control l to clear that and close this and now we'll go to settings and encrypt log so type in your password. I'm just going to use the password SOT, capital B, capital O, capital E, and D3. D3. Click on that. I click yes, and after a little while you'll see this, and it is going to close the dark corner client because it's encrypting the log. Click OK, and it'll close that down. So now the dark team rationode wallet ready to have dark coin 1000 dark coins sent to it to the coin national so this is the actual wallet file hot dog go zero one and what you want probably want to do is create a backup of this file right here so what I recommend is uh, FINRA doesn't require any backup but you know where you want to keep this file is through password for this uh, so that so that you can keep a copy of the wallet folder in here and it will have a password to uh, 
with the uh, mm -hmm. also you should put the excel file in here uh, when you're finished and you put all the information in there and then uh, that's what I'll do and then I'll also put in the uh, comp file which Todd has installed and then zerogo.com and we're going to update that later and then you're going to save all three of those items and all of your comp files and wallet files and this and these password protected files uh, are going to be in here as well so next uh, we are ready to send 1000 dark coins to this wallet so we can go back to Christy and under dark coin we can click on uh, withdraw dark coin and that will allow you to send your balance should be over 1000 dark coins so you will want to type in here the amount of dark coins will be 1000 plus whatever extra so it looks like 1000.004 here shows up as a net withdrawal of 1000 which would be exactly 1000 dark coins sent to this wallet so under dark withdrawal address we want to go to the excel file and choose the public key control c and paste it in here control v that will be the public address of the masternode which we have 1000 dark coins in so i'll do password here and click this if you have two password authentication and then i'll type in the code that it sends to your to your cell phone here to process withdrawal and then it sends you an email and you'll have a link to click on the email and once you click that it will show up and said view all withdrawals and we want to view all withdrawals and it will be a process withdrawal sending the the dark coins to your dark coin wallet and you have to wait until that gets until it gets 15 confirmations until you'll be able to actually get your masternode into your wallet so now we're ready to create this comp file uh, mm0one.comp which is asset and the key colon slash dark coin so I'll open this up with my pad and go back to the excel file and under mm setup down at the very bottom where it says local comp and we're going to put in the IP here and the masternode private key right here so that's mm info comp which is right in here so I'll copy this mm setup uh, info comp exes slash IP space and I'll do the same on the three sectors right here space okay and now I want the master node private key and that's the mm info and the mm key is good enough so copy this right now or click on copy that to the info file okay okay and now we want to change this user and password just change this to some other random password like that and then you can just keep all of this together uh, at once control C and all of it up and paste it all into the comp file oops okay so all saved so now you have your local ready to set up the uh, remote unit program so I'll go to Teddy and as I said if you if you go to the zip file you'll get this program called Teddy and we'll type in the IP address here oops control C okay and oops the login will be root and the password will be just a zero and a double one all you have to do is right click to create it okay and once you have logged in you will want to change the password so I'll do tofwt and I'll enter in the password and it applies and then uh, it'll update the password or else it will say zero and then it'll update the password so now if we go to the Excel file uh, under MN setup, we'll go back up to the top. So now you can go through and anything that's red here, you can change to be whatever it is for your masternode. So this will be the IP address, and you can click on 
and the input the digital output of this will be copy that um, paste that in anywhere you see this output so I can paste it into this uh, to our print layer this uh, port 56 you can use 56 or use whatever number port you want just change the content and I will hand paste it in the uh, Make sure that this is the most recent version of the Qualcomm uh, Link PC that you're going to be downloading. If you are 16.16 years old, so you can't just do uh, 17.21 or whatever most recent one is, you have to do O, change these passwords to do something terrible to put in your email address if you want to email your host. Uh, this here is the private messenger private key. update all of these to make sure that they uh, do the exact same thing. Okay, so now that you've updated all of these uh, to the web, you can sort of uh, go back up to the top and there'll be a lot of copy and, copy and pasting line by line. So the way you paste in Putty uh, is just to click that pastes whatever you've got. So you basically the next line will be Control C in Excel and you would right click right here and it will type in uh, an extra an input. I, it's not going to work for me because I've already done all of this to set it set it up. But uh, for the purpose of things, when you type this in here, it's going to ask you, uh, "Are you sure?" And it, you type in Y-E-S, and it should ask, and then uh, it'll ask you for a password type that in. So then when you when you Control C here and paste it in, it'll ask you for a password twice, and then after that, press Enter, 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 Y, Enter, and then you're set up to secure. These two you can do when you're light blue, you can do them together. So control C on these, right click that here, and uh, it will have, it, you'll, be, you'll be starting creating another login user there. So but for you, it'll be asked for a password twice, and hit enter, 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 Y, enter, and you'll set up that login user. Uh, control C, right click. this slide down and up here so this you will see right now says 22 you're going to change this to whatever number you want and I'm using 56 so uh, I'm leaving it 56 but you can make it whatever number different port number you want you can make it save the session you can uh, create a session for p 56 okay so put in the IP here and port 56 here and if you want to save this for your master node 01 and then save then you could save it for the future so you can easily access it without having to close it again but for now just going to going to uh, open it this way so open and And now I'm in this line. Uh, so you can see control C and right click, new password, and I don't want that for some reason. Right click, new password. and 
at first and you'll see it, this is not really updating very much but you should probably be updating and just click yes for things and then uh, when it comes to the print screen hit the right hit the right arrow and enter and then the up arrow and enter and uh, I'll get rid of that for now so <coughs> click and reboot close this down open up probably one more time and we have uh, we've already saved this little person you can go over here Breadcrumb shows you it's starting. So if you want to see what it's doing, you can just do a mouse click and click. You can see it's doing a bunch of stuff. And to get out of that, control C to remove it. Be out of that. So let's do that. Go here and uh, if you want to get info, start command B, get info, control C, and that's it. Uh, this will show you uh, the version number is should be the most recent one, which is 17.3, so that's right. So make sure yours is the most recent. And this is the protocol version. When you're updating the mouse remote, you can, if the protocol version changes from this number to something else, you don't, you're going to have to do the mouse remote start and enter the local log to get the mouse to update to the new start command protocol. And uh, right now, your block probably will be uh, a smaller number. Uh, so when you keep on, if you press up and enter and keep looking at this over and over, probably see that this number gets bigger each time because it's downloading blocks because of this brand new server that's downloading the blocks from it. And once it gets up to the current number, then you'll just start a new number for it and it'll have the number of blocks it has. And the wallet has started up and synced. Uh, you can take a look at the balance. It should be exactly 1,000 dark coins that you sent to this wallet from Tripsy. And the transaction that sent the coin confirmation. So put your mouse over this and make sure it you have to wait until it confirms at least 15 times before you can start the mouse remote. So then when you're ready to start the mouse remote, click on the help, debug window, and console. And now just type in mouse remote start space and your password. successfully started mouse remote. So now your mouse remote is running. Congratulations. You can close down Darkcoin and in its backup file, I called it backup.io, but uh, password protect is this file for backup. Uh, you should save a copy of the Darkcoin setup config file in here. It's file mn001.com. So if you save a copy of that, done that, you probably want to check to see if your mouse remote is running. So go to drk.mn and in, in the Excel file, you see that this I have this uh, 
things that you can type in. If you have multiple master nodes, you can type in the IP uh, for, for the, the flying between them uh, and address them, and you can check them to see if they're linked. Uh, so just type in the IP uh, here, or you can type the name in the fancy font right here, and it will tell which one, which master node they're running on. And if it's good, it'll ask for IP only. And it'll say build one up here, balance that here, and then start building parent lines for your, your entire network. But to update your master nodes, like I said at the beginning of this video, it does not occur to Paul Bridge Chain for you to just copy all of this all at once and paste it into uh, Putty. Uh, it'll automatically update its master nodes. If you do have the protocol version changed, then for each master node you have, if it has one that ha it has its own shortcut, has its own wallet, or has its own trunk path. So the shortcut should should go to the correct wallet and the correct trunk. And and again, the master nodes start with the attached or wallet node to restart each master node to do the update. Now, if you have multiple master nodes, then what you can do is create one wallet that controls all of the trains on all of the wallets. So you can send uh, when you get payments, you can send them all you know all together at once. So create a shortcut again to that train and by clicking on it, it will attach you you know to the target. After it says darktrain-dc.exe, add in space dash d a t a d i r equals uh, whatever the data directory is going to be uh, for the uh, free train slash hot dog space dash wallet equals and whatever you want as many multiple wallets to be the one that controls all of your trains so like I told you if it's a node it'll be multiple wallets so then you just click apply ok and when you open this it'll create its own multiple wallet so once that starts up it will appear the wallet and you can tap you can click the wallet and it'll have the list of nodes that you want to uh, post your train if you want to post more than one so I've got this hooked up with the help guard and I click on the trunk button first you need to unlock the wallet for the correlated train and then you need to import the private key so type in wallet passphrase space and that's the password for it and that's the name of the train space and now the number of seconds that you want to leave this wallet unlocked so I'm going to put in uh, I think you can see the password that I'm running here on my workbench but it's still a full length and then we are going to import the private keys one by one you should list it all of your public and private keys and master node keys uh, and see how that goes if you go to the private key for each of the uh, master nodes that you've created and control C to copy it Import private key, and I'm going to put in control C, type in master wallet space, and paste in whatever yours is. It won't be all activated if you use the private key. And when you press enter, you'll see that the total balance will add 1,000 new start trains to this multiple wallet every time you import one private key. So if you've imported, say, five of them, you sh then, this, then this will show a balance of 5,000 for this wallet that controls all five of the masternodes uh, trains. So now that you have a multiple wallet that is controlling all of your masternode coins, you can uh, send, you can start getting payments like this gets the 5,000 new coins, but you've got 20 coins that you want to send somewhere else, you can click on send and you have to allow coin control. So you go to settings, options, display and display coin control feature if you do want that fixed then so uh, when you go to send click on enter list mode and you will see your 1000 and then you will see the payments like 1.5 and 1.5 or whatever so I click the check boxes that will be over here only for the small amount that are master node payments uh, so all of those are checked and I click OK 
connection to the address of the address we need. Uh, and once you have uh, payment selected in this, in this input, it will show over on the right side the amount after the fees are paid uh, that you will be able to send. So just type in the amount that it says over here uh, in, in here, and then you'll send all of those coins. Left uh, dark pinned, unchecked, and click send, and it will send all of those coins to our address. So you can have the maximum coin that you can get. If anybody wants to give me some tips, uh, dark coin tip address is down below, and I appreciate it. Thank you for watching this video, and good luck as a Master Node operator. Congratulations.